Hello, 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 hello. Let me adjust my camera here so you guys you can see me. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hey, how you guys doing? Karibuni sana. I got gifts today. Uh, I'm gonna interview him. Uh, let me hang on, guys. So sorry. Let me just adjust this uh, camera here so I can see me. Okay. Hi Rhoda, how are you? How is everybody doing? Duta duo, karibu sana. Gits na kuona. Hey! Niaze, how are you? Hey, karibu ni sana. Yeah, I see my friend there, Mr. Nachai there from uh, Buffalo, New York. Hey Das, Niaze, how are you? Yeah, karibu ni sana guys. Uh, this is gonna be good. Yeah, join in. Uh, Tag a friend, uh, Nick Karoga Nyadze. Uh, Karibuni sana. Uh, uh, Git, uh, if you can send an invite uh, so you can get started here. Yeah, Faith, uh, Anyango Richard. Karibu sana. Etori Naomi. Karibu sana. Uh, Git, can you send an invite? Uh, and make sure your phone is, uh, is uh, you unlock uh, the screen. All right, uh, let me invite uh, Gitz here. I think he's online. Um, all righty. Yeah, join in, guys. I got Gitz here with me. He's just going to join me in a second uh, from now. Dirango Samo, Niaze, how are you? I'm uh, waiting to connect with Git here so we can get started. <clears throat> and here he is. What's up? What's up, my man? How are you doing? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That's well, I need just that's my phone. Good. Yeah. Uh, I think we're just gonna hang around for a few more minutes. Uh, you you turned uh, sideways, so there you go. Yeah. You good now? You good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what's it? Yeah, I, think I need to. I think I need to adjust my camera here. Is this a little bit it's cutting me. Yeah, I think that's that's good. That's good now. Yeah, you're looking good. All right, there you go. Good, good, good. good. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. All right. We got my champagne here. We're gonna celebrate tonight. You got your champagne. Okay. I got my good. Yeah. I got my. Uh, I got my water. <laughs> I got my Alrighty, I just I just got a, a champagne here, so um, so we we gonna celebrate you tonight, and I hope this is gonna be exciting. Uh, so guys, uh, if you're watching me, uh, you know you may wanna tag a friend. Uh, this is uh, Gitawe Rimo here. Uh, he's one of the four students uh, to graduate uh, from the first ever master's uh, program uh, of uh, nuclear medicine. Uh, so tonight we wanna know where he's from, uh, where his inspiration is coming from. And we want to know about all these uh, nuclear uh, medicine. Uh, Mr. Gates, I think we have a good forum here. We have about maybe 50 people. Uh, I'll yeah. first uh, have you introduce uh, yourself uh, to the yeah, viewers, please. Tell us who you are, where you're from, in the school you went. Kila Kitu, let us know who you are. Oh, so I don't even know how to start from. Well... <laughs> Um, I'm Gitz Warimo. That's that's what people know me on online. Yeah. Um, my first name is John Gitao Warimo, mm -hmm. and um, I'm from Karura, um, mm -hmm. Kiambu. Uh, Karura Gada Okay. Karura Gada um, Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. There are two of them. There's Kanyongo and Gada and then there's, there's Karura Forest. But actually, okay. most people in high school thought I came from Karura Forest because in high school they used to call me Karura. I was like, but you no, know, I'm from Karura on the way to Angiga and all that. Oh, um, I went, I went to primary school at Karura primary school. Okay. And then um, I went to Kembo High School. Kembo High School, yeah. And 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 uh, that's what, actually one of the best uh, high schools in Kembo County. Is that is that is that uh, correct? Yeah, yeah. What is that? 
is one of the best uh, schools in Kiambu County, Kiambu High. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, it's one of the best schools in Kiambu County. Actually, uh, uh, Engineer Gitaro goes, uh, went to high school with me. Yeah. I think he was two years ahead. He was uh, two years ahead of me at Kiambu High School, so, yeah. Yeah, for those who doesn't know, uh, my co-host here, Engineer Gitaro, uh, he went the same school with this guy. Did you know him back then? Uh, Engineer Gitao. I knew him, yeah. I knew him used to be so loud, just like he is right now. So I like Gitao, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> he, uh, he, was, he was two years ahead of me. So, oh, okay. So I, I and him. it's very interesting. I was talking to him yesterday, and uh, he did engineering, but his thesis was actually about the nuclear medicine. So that was oh, very really? exciting. Yes. Uh, yeah. And he sent me his thesis, and I was looking at it, and I was like, wow, that's very exciting stuff. Uh, so, yes. uh, Gitz, uh, let's uh, talk about, uh, I have like four sections here we're going to talk about today. Uh, number mm -hmm. one is going to be upbringing and where you get your inspiration. We might take a pause and take some questions uh, from the viewers. And number two, you're going to talk about your education, like, uh, you know, where you went to school, like here in, in States, uh, the choice of the career that you chose, uh, nuclear medicine. Uh, and then uh, the next topic is going to be uh, the nuclear medicine. We want to know more about uh, the, because uh, I understand you went to UAB, right? That is yeah, university. university. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about that and the scope of practice and what you guys do uh, in nuclear medicine. Uh, the other uh, topic we're going to talk about is uh, UAB uh, selection uh, process. I, I heard it's very strange as a, a process. So if you can talk to viewers about that. Uh, okay. So, and uh, we might take a pause, uh, you know, a break, each and every section and take some uh, questions from the viewers. Uh, so let's uh, get started. Uh, you have broken the internet, that's for sure. Uh, you've been trending all about. over the, uh, the world, United States, in Kenya, everywhere. And uh, I'm going to ask you, who do you owe your success uh, to? Like, is there anybody you can think about your success? Uh, is there your mom? Is there your peers? Is there your... Who do you owe your success to? Oh, my success. Uh, I would owe it to my professors. I would start with my professors and 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 all my teachers that really have taught me something in life. Because um, mm -hmm. you know you can't learn things by yourself. So you know my teachers by my um, my mother who is very 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 um, supportive, who's never given up on me. Um, you know I dropped out of school when I came here for like two and a half years, and mm -hmm. and, 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 and and you know back then when I came here. When you drop out of school, you think you're a loser and all about things get tough. You know, you, you in America, you know how things get tough when you're a student, you're a foreign mm -hmm. student, and, and things get too tough, and and you know, tuition fees like double the price, right? Mm -hmm. So things get tough and no help. So I end up dropping out of school, but my mother didn't give up on me, and, and I told her I was going to get back to school. I was going to find ways to get back in a day. It took me a long time to finish school. Mm -hmm. 13 years, man. 13 years is a long time. But she never gave up on me every time. I talked to her. She's like, hey, my son, no, 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 no. She always prays for me. And my grandmother, who's also mm -hmm. been praying for me, and my sister. Also, my sister, Sarah, she, she really pushed me a whole lot. Um, like, she get mad when I do stupid stuff. You know, we do some stupid stuff sometimes. But she's the only person who really get really mad. The, the number one person who really, really gave me support, uh, who is also my second mom, is my auntie. Her name is Betty. Mm -hmm. uh, Betty, uh, she has really raised me, supported my mom and me, even though my mom was not well off to really bring me up. She really cheated me a whole lot, and uh, she really cheated in and really helped me a whole lot. And she's actually the, the one who is behind me coming to the U.S. Okay. She's um, really yeah. So uh, your mom, uh, your sister, and your aunt, and your grandmother, uh, I can see you have a very good uh, support, uh, support system there. Uh, the other yeah. Thing, you know, yeah. <laughs> The other question exactly. I was going to ask you, uh, you have uh, said like uh, you were brought up by a, a single, uh, you know, mom uh, yes, without yes. father. Uh, there are so many kids out here uh, who are fatherless for one reason or the other. What can you tell them? What can you tell them to inspire them? Like, it's okay. As long as you have a father figure, as long as your mom got you. Is there any message you can pass to people who are like brought up by either a single parent, either mom or dad? If you can talk to them uh, at this time and tell them, encourage them, what would you tell them? You know, it, it's okay. It's okay to grow up uh, with a single mom. It, it's okay. As long as you have the right support system, uh, like what I say, uh, uh, I didn't really miss out a whole lot uh, in life. I, I didn't realize I missed the father figure in my life because I had the, 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 all the support that I needed. 
my mother, I have grandmother, my sister, uh, my auntie, and, and the whole community really have really raised me in such a way that I did miss out that father figure. Even my friends, my peers, uh, when I was growing up, one of my best friends, um, her name is Nicole. Uh, I did really miss out, and we blended our whole lot, you know, a whole lot of my friends in the community. So it's okay. You you can still do it. Is it, your father don't want to be in your life? Is it? It's not gonna bother you. It's it didn't bother me, but I guess on my part, I had so much love from from everybody that I'm, I didn't realize I didn't have a father until I way grew up way like old older. Uh, that's good, and I can tell you, like uh, people uh, like myself, I lost my dad when I was only ten years old, and we're wow. breaking barriers. Uh, no matter that's where good. you come from, you know. Uh, that is not a good reason to say I'm not going to go to school because uh, I didn't have a, that, a father figure. And I, I'm sure you can attest uh, to that. Uh, is there anybody who you look up to, any mentors, uh, if you can think of, uh, who have helped you uh, through this journey? Any mentors? Yeah, like I said, my auntie, she's my mentor. She's always been behind my back. My mom always be talking to me. She's, she's been my mom. She's been my father. Uh, and... and um, well, all my professors, and I remember in my high school uh, used to be, uh, my high school, in my high school headmaster mm -hmm. um, also was very supportive of us. And he grew up, you know, he raised us as boys that we used to call us comrades in Kembo High School. So uh, he's also my mentor. He used to be my teacher parent, uh, 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 Mr. Mbogwa. So, um, well, um, and, and, and actually, uh, my show, show, she's also my mentor. Uh, She's always talked to me every time I call her on Skype. Uh, she, I'm praying for you. You know, we expect, you know, we expect big things from you. You know, you went to America. You know, when you come to America, people expect big things from you. As, and, and also, I'll be about myself. I mean, I'm going to tell myself, too. I think about it. I think, you know, I sit down and think and, and, and think about stuff. And it's also good to mentor yourself, you know, like you don't want to disappoint a whole lot of people. You know, even that, the, you know, being scared of disappointing a whole lot of people really believed in you. Uh, that's that can be a good mentorship. Yeah, uh, that, that's a uh, uh, pretty good uh, gift. Uh, the other question I have for you is: uh, lately, I think you have been following on social media. There is these uh, debates going on, uh, like the a boy child is uh, left uh, behind. Number one, I would like uh, to hear your views about that. If it's true, whether you support it or you don't support it. And uh, if it is, you support it, uh, what uh, do we go wrong? And how can we improve on this uh, boy child uh, being left behind? Well, um, I don't think the boy child has been left behind. Because mm -hmm. most of the stuff that uh, have been even in our culture, they have been favoring boys a whole lot. It's just that uh, people realize now in, in the 20th century that we also need to include the girl child. Uh, not because a lot of people are talking about the girl child, it doesn't mean that the boy child has been left behind. It's just that we left the girl child uh, behind for so many years, even the culture wise, especially in Africa. And now the people are trying to realize that you know we need to bring up the girl child. Uh, the girl child right now is just getting so much attention. Yeah. Uh, but getting so much attention doesn't mean you know giving attention to uh to the boy child. It's just that the girl child now is getting the attention she was supposed to begin from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But she was good. Yeah. Uh, the boy child is also getting this kind of support uh, uh, he needed. That's what I believe. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's uh, very true, uh, Gibbs, because uh, back in the days uh, when I was growing up, uh, if somebody had a sister that was like, okay, I think you need you to give your brother a chance to go to high school, or you're going to get married. Uh, you're going to get like a husband who has money. And I think uh, from that, that perspective, I think uh, the girl child, uh, you know, they've been getting a lot of attention uh, coming from that, uh, you know, era of like, okay, you're going to get married, you don't need uh, uh, enough education. So uh, the other thing I know you mentioned about uh, you dropping out of the school, uh, can you give us some of the tips uh, that you have been able to maintain yourself to get back on track? I know you come here, uh, you're supposed to go to school, we can afford the school fees for like $5,000 uh, per semester. Yeah. How have you been able to get back on track when you drop out of school? and going back to school. If you can talk to somebody who is right now uh, struggling to go back to school, what can you tell them? Well, um, if you're here, you want to get back. It depends on your situation, though, because when you get when you come here on a student visa, that's what I came out with, uh, and you drop out of school, you, you get out of status. You, you know, you, you, 
and go out and say, that's for you to go back to school. You really have to fix your, your, your paperwork, you know. You have to fix your paperwork. You have to really uh, uh, change status from being, you know, of student visa. And that's what I did. Or either go back and reapply again for a visa. I didn't do that. So uh, God gave me an opportunity. And uh, my status was changed from, from being a student on a student visa to permanent residence. And then back, uh, and then again, he, he kept promoting me and, and, and became a citizen. And that's how I was able to... Uh, to, to reapply school without being penalized or without being taken back by the by the ICE. Yeah, and, and it's okay to drop out of school. If you're here, you have dropped the school, it's okay. I, I myself, I came- It was really a, hard. Yeah, I came as a student and my mom could not be able to afford like 5,000 uh, every three months and I had to drop out of school. But I later went back to school and I finished uh, what yeah. I started. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, every story is different uh do what you gotta do whether it's like working two jobs i actually went to my school when i have two full-time jobs because i needed money to take me to school and i was single then i didn't have any kids you know so there's so many ways you can be able to raise uh, money and we're going to talk about uh scholarship and stuff like that uh, later on there was actually one time so yeah. got short there was actually one time for three consecutive years i worked seven days in a row in a gas station I, yeah. I'm taking out off days because you want to keep up with the bills. And, 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 you know, when you're a student, you're not going to get high-paying jobs, you know. You, yeah. It's going to pay jobs that you're going to maintain your bills. Now, for you to be able to pay for tuition, which is double the price for international students, you will have to do a whole lot of hours of, of work or do two, three, four, five jobs. For me, I didn't do two or three jobs but I, uh, in, in the first years when I came here, but I did so many hours in the gas station. Yeah. And after work, I'm doing combining different jobs here and there just 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 to leave to survive and at one point i was like i can't i can't do it uh i risked getting out of status i became out of status uh and i lost my visa and and it was really hard it was yeah. really hard to stay in school yeah, you, get you, really you, yeah you gotta do what you gotta do yeah you yeah. gotta do what you gotta do i cannot tell you how many people 200 300 pounds i have lifted for these heavy people at the nursing home but you gotta do exactly. it i didn't have no choice I have worked for exactly. seven days a week, but you gotta do what you exactly. gotta do. So, yeah. yeah, so it is what it is. Uh, let's move on to the next uh, topic. And I, I see here, you know, mostly it's like people that are giving you congrats, uh, not really uh, any questions uh, in specific. Uh, I about, yeah, the education. Um, I know you say you're in Kembu High. What was your favorite subject uh, back then? <laughs> on on our, 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 I'm gonna show you on this. I, I used to, I used to love home science and uh, we, I used to love uh, the sewing using the sewing machine and and cooking. I'm a great cook, so uh, actually home science was my favorite subject actually because I I could engage myself in doing something. Because most of the classes in Kenya they just teach a whole lot of theory, so uh, I could not attach myself to a particular subject. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Hello. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Yeah, I think someone was trying to call you there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's accurate, uh, that updates. But anyway, uh, most of the time, the home science, because I could get my hands onto something, so you go out there and cook. That's what I realized, like, um, I had the passion of just making things work. And, yeah. and that's how, that was my favorite subject. Oh, my goodness. And uh, what associate degree do you, do, what do you have in associate's degree? What did you took? Well, uh, I have an associate in sciences. Uh, I enrolled in industrial manufacturing uh, when, I, when I came here. That was about okay. 10 years ago. And then the, the, motor, the motor industry was falling back then. So uh, people were talking a whole lot of, uh, you know, bailing the, the, the motor industry and all that. So uh, I got discouraged. Uh, and so I wanted to join nursing school. But I ended up doing just uh, 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 associates in sciences uh, when I was looking for forward to joining the, uh, a four-year college. Oh, okay. And your bachelor's, or did you pursue in your bachelor's uh, degree? No, well, yeah, my bachelor's, yeah, my bachelor's is public health, without, you know, constitution of epidemiology. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, that's uh, uh, pretty good. Uh, so, um, so what do you do now for a living, if you can tell the viewers about right now, mm -hmm. Right now? Right now? I work uh, as a, a unit support specialist at, uh, at the Children's Hospital in Alabama, so. Oh, okay. So you don't do anything uh, related to your public health uh, degree, is it? Is it not? Nah, nah, yeah, uh, I would have, but when, when I enrolled back in a grad school, 
you really want a job that uh, want to give you some more time for study. I worked night shift and mm -hmm. go to school full time all day and do the clinicals and all that. So uh, doing a job in epidemiology would have entailed me doing an eight to five kind of a job. Uh, I could find most public health job related uh, that I could work at nighttime. So I ended up doing uh, something that I did do my bachelor's in so I can get some more time to go to school in the daytime and also more time, excuse me, to study. Okay, uh, that's true. Uh, so I got to ask you, uh, you have done science in, in associates, uh, you have done public health, now you have just graduated with master's uh, in uh, nuclear medicine. Uh, sure. So is there any uh, reason why you never chose uh, patient, uh, you know, direct pa patient uh, care? Because uh, I can see you have chosen like preventative uh, care for the patient. And uh, now you're going to diagnostic and research. Uh, is there anything or any reason why you don't want that uh, direct uh, patient care interaction, uh, like nursing no, or actually, physical no, therapy? Actually, mm -hmm. No, actually, nuclear medicine is, is, is direct patient interaction, actually. So, uh, is it, it does it? Okay. Uh, it does. It does. Actually, one-on-one uh, -on -one patient interaction at all, because, you know, it is, in, uh, uh, well, it is because uh, you involved injecting patients and following through, you know, following them through, and, and trying to see whether the diseases are located or that. So it is one on one contact with patients uh, oh, yeah. throughout the day. Oh, so it does have some uh, patient, uh, you know, uh, direct patient care interaction. Exactly. Oh, that's exactly. Uh, yeah, and uh, are you looking to pursue uh, medicine like MD uh, in future? Is that's what I was looking at. Yeah, that's what I was looking at when I was uh, trying to. Uh, when I found out nuclear medicine, I was going to get to med school, but mm -hmm. then uh, school gets med school gets so competitive, especially when you're foreigner, you come last on the list, and then it's so expensive. Uh, uh, by the time I was trying to enroll, I didn't get a chance to enroll on that. So um, one of my advices, because I had a whole lot of background in physics, and, uh, and, and so nuclear medicine also involved a whole lot of physics background and also uh, this, uh, other sciences. So I did. My advice is, do you want me just to it, you know, to waste that down the drain? So they told me that this thing called nuclear medicine uh, did the research, and uh, it also deals with dealing with patients and, and, and you know and therapy and all that. So I like it. Yeah. And I it. Yeah, and and one thing I gotta say about medicine, I think it's one of those careers you have to start maybe in your twenties, uh, because yes. you have to go four years, and then you have to go uh, maybe four years in residency. You have to go. Two more years is about like ten years uh, program, and you know, but is I say it's never too late. Uh, I don't think I don't think I want to do uh, I don't think I want to do medicine now because um, it's going to involve me going back to school for so many. I'm, I, I, I feel like I'm that's too what I'm old. Saying. Yeah. So so it's going to involve like seven more before I start actually actual practicing. It's yes. going to uh, general medicine. It's going to take me seven more years to do that. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But I might go I'm four years at med school. And then you have to yeah. go two or three years uh, for residency. Residency, exactly. And if you want to specialize, you have to go to two more years. So that's, that's exactly. a lot of years. There's yeah. Two more years in town, the two more years of residency, and then the fellow, then you become, you know, start yeah. practicing on yourself. By yourself, I mean, that's a whole yeah. lot of years. And I feel at my age, I don't think I want to end. I, don't, I just I don't think I want to get on with general medicine like that. It's, yeah. It's, 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 I, may, it's, I may try radiology, uh, which is pretty much close to nuclear medicine or yeah. uh, oncology, uh, but not actual general medicine or, or okay. maybe cardiology. Yeah, that's good. Um, let's talk about the nuclear medicine. What is it if, in simple terms? If you can tell the viewers, if I hear the word nuclear medicine, what does it come, you know, explain to uh, somebody who in a layman's language, what is a nuclear medicine? When, when nuclear medicine is... Um, is a branch of medicine that it, that deals with radioactive drugs or radioactive medicine to diagnose therapy and, and treat diseases and find diseases. So uh, the medicine is injected in your system, your bloodstream, depending on what kind of you know the, depending on the pathology, uh, it's injected in your system and uh, it pinpoints directly where uh, a defect is. Or uh, let's say you have a fracture, or you have a, a, a can you know you have a, an ongoing cancer. And uh, the doctors are trying to do surgery, but they can't really pinpoint exactly what that is. So um, nuclear medicine, that's where nuclear medicine comes in 
And once you re we inject the patient with the radiology, it goes directly to where those cancer cells are, or any kind of pressure, if you have a heart defect, you know, or ischemia, or brain damages, all those kind of stuff, it goes exactly to that point, and it shows the doctor exactly where it is so they can be able to have to have the proper treatment. It also involves therapy. Uh, uh, I would say it, it, it's, it's the opposite of CT. A lot of people know CT and MRI. So CT shoots radiation through your body, and that's how people collect images. So now nuclear medicine, we inject you with radiation. The radiation is radiated outside your body, and those cameras pick up those radiation and pinpoint exactly where that radiation came from, and that's how we uh, define diseases. Uh, so what's the difference again between the CT scan, MRI, uh, X-ray? You say it shoots the images outside the body, but the uh, nuclear medicine is from inside, or how does it work? Exactly. So now okay. CT, a CT machine is it, it, actually it's, it's, it throws radiation to yes. your body. Yeah. And so if you have or if you have a pathology anyway in your body, uh, most of radiation goes to a pathology depending on how you know, depending on how they're programming. So, the, so it shoots radiation to your body. Now, nuclear medicine, we inject you with radiation, and then your body is radiating radiation outside your body. And that's how those, and then the, you use cameras to collect those radiation coming out of your body from what, whatever part of your body. If it's, for example, if you're trying to, uh, it, you know, just see a heart defect, or uh, you have blockages in your heart, you're going to inject you the radio uh, um, active drug that is specifically meant to go to your heart. So we monitor your blood flow. So now if you have a defect on your heart, you're going to see some, you know, it's like you're going to see some blockages or, you know, the radiation isn't going to go there where the blockage is. So once we get our uh, image put you on the camera, everywhere else in your heart, it's going to be radiating too much radiation, but the part that has a blockage will not. Mm -hmm. So basically that's how, we, that's how it works. So it involves also cameras that look like CT cameras, but it's not actual CT cameras. They do opposite of the CT. Okay, and for those who have interest uh, in nuclear medicine, what's, what are some of the equipments you guys use? Uh, maybe you can name a few. Or maybe uh, you, uh, you guys yeah, we just use... use uh, we use gamma cameras. Uh, gamma cameras are supposed to collect uh, radiation out of your body. They look like MRI machines, or they look like CT machines, but they actually are called gamma cameras. They do opposite of what the MRI and CT does. MRI shoots magnetic waves through your body. Uh, so nuclear medicine just do the opposite of those. But the, people confuse nuclear medicine, CT, and MRI, but they talk about different modalities. But they, 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 they are all imaging, uh, you know, processes. Uh, can you also talk about the PETs? What is a PET scan? Is it, is it in, involved in a, like a PET is nuclear, medicine. nuclear medicine? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a part of nuclear medicine. The PET scan is called positron, uh, positron emission tomography. Okay. So you, you know, uh, positron, the, 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 um, that's a higher, more radiation nuclear medicine kind of drug. It was called FDG. Uh, once it injected in your body, it gives more radiation. So basically, most of the time, you use it for oncology. So once you get a, we get we get injected with that radioactive drug called FDG, uh, electrons are uh, it, you know, it radiates some electrons while they interact with natural electrons coming out of your body. That's why they give positrons. I give two positrons from a point. So the positrons radiate out and are get they are collected by the camera. But the only difference okay. is a positron uh, tomography, you know, you take images going around all over your body so you can get, you know, transverse images of your body. So now uh, regular nuclear medicine is just a camera. You go through a camera, it takes images. Now PET scan, it, it takes images throughout, you know, around your body. So it can get images way in where CT cannot and MRI cannot. It goes inside inside your bone. It can trace a a, a, a cancer a cell inside the bone on a on a three sixty degrees. Okay. So um, and, I, and I hope uh, yeah. we, we're not using so much uh, medical jargons here. I know it's very hard for somebody who is a non medical uh, to understand some of these uh, you know uh, terminologies uh, out there for yes. you know PET scan, CT scan, MRI, CT you know. It, it gets crazy and complicated. Uh, tell us a, a day in life of a nuclear medicine scientist. What do you do? Today, you're going to work the first thing you do in the morning or in the evening, whenever you get on your shift. A day in life of a, a medical, uh, you know, nuclear medicine yeah. scientist. 
once you once you, once you get in the hospital, uh, nuclear medicine, uh, you have to make sure you have uh, the drugs, the radio the radioactive drugs you have for the days. Most of the time, they are uh, being ordered the previous day, and uh, they expire in time. Some of them, one of them, we call technetium, expires after six hours. So once you program a patient at a certain time, you have to make sure that you have all the drugs uh, for that particular time. We don't get the drugs for all the patients all the day because they expire. They keep coming from the radio pharmacy. So you have to make sure you have all the drugs. You have to make sure that you monitor the radiation because the government really monitors. This is radiation is pretty much dangerous. So you have to really monitor how much radiation in the room. Uh, do we have any spills in the room? Are working real good. Uh, um, make sure you don't have any other radiation besides what the drugs in there. Then so make sure all, all your patients have confirmed that they're coming in. That's basically a typical morning of our of nuclear medicine. Okay, and uh, I'm just curious because I have taken people to uh, nuclear medicine, uh, one of the hospitals I used to work, but we used yes. to call it uh, interventional radiology. Is that the same thing or is that a, a whole different uh, topic? Different hospitals call it different, uh, different names. Okay. Some, some hospitals will call it nuclear medicine department. Uh, some hospitals uh, will consider nuclear medicine under, under uh, radiology because it is radiation. Uh, it depends on what hospital you at. They call it different names, but most okay. hospitals use nuclear medicine department. Okay. Um, there is, um, what is the scope of practice of the nuclear medicine scientist? Uh, and uh, is there any difference between nuclear medicine scientist and, uh, and uh, nuclear medicine technologist? Any difference? No, I don't think uh, uh, there's no different nuclear medicine technology, nuclear medicine scientists. It's just that right now, this is the first master's program. So we try to, they're trying to come up with a name to give this profession. Also, one of the uh, nuclear medicine association president, the elect, is what happened to be one of my professors. Uh, he's the president of all, you know, all over the United States. Uh, they are really trying to make sure that, trying to find a new name for it, because now it's a master's program. You know, the nursing health, nuclear medicine practitioner. They really try to make, no, the nursing half nursing practitioners after the bachelor's level. So uh, they try to use that, but the nursing folks say, no, this, this is ours. So they, they're actually trying to come up with a new name, but it's pretty much, is a nuclear, med nuclear medicine technologist on a higher level, but they actually haven't uh, come up with, a, with a, the correct uh, professional name for it. Cause it's pretty new, it's barely new. Uh, this uh, my, you, not, you know UAB is the only school that offering it now. I understand that some, there might be some few other schools that are just trying to join the program at the master's level, but our school is the first one and the only one in the country that did that now. So um, as more folks trying to get into it, they will try to come up with a, 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 a right professional name. So right now, I think you're being categorized as still nuclear medicine technologies. Um, okay. Uh, so what you're saying, the scope of practice is still the same. Yes. Okay, and the entry level for these uh, type of career, what is it? The it's entry not actually level? the same. No. Yeah, no, you know, as, as, you know, for all master's degrees, the training and management level and how to do with patients more and, and more yeah. managerial stuff and more decision-making yeah. kind of stuff. So it might be the same, but a little bit of more extra stuff to make exactly. it on, on a master's level. Exactly. And the entry level is a associate degree if you want to become uh, the uh, nuclear medicine technologist is that correct? Yeah, there are schools. Yeah, there are schools offering is in associate level, our schools uh, bachelor's level, and now uh, we uh, with the first is is a uh, master's level. Okay, uh, that's uh, pretty good. Um, and uh, maybe let me read some few questions here because I'm trying to make these as more interactive as possible. Uh, then exactly. we can go to the next uh, you know topic here. Uh, looking uh, here, um, um, somebody is saying, uh, Faith Maura inspired, we need inspiration and mentors uh, for us and our kids interested in health uh, sciences. Uh, sky is a uh, limit. Uh, that is uh, Faith uh, Maura. Uh, and um, Washo Dirango is, where is my certificate? I'm good now. I know what is what it is uh, from your explanation. Uh, that uh, means you did a pretty good job of explaining what is <laughs> a medicine. That is uh, a uh, Durango. Uh, where Rimoki Mani said doesn't get it. I don't blame you. It's gonna get a little bit complicated. 
uh, to get some of these, uh, you know, these terminologies and, you know, so it, it, uh, it, it's, it's, it's complicated. Uh, Jim Monkey is say, I love that he has our Karura village on the map. Thank God for our mom, Joyce, uh, for raising you right. Uh, by the way, you. your Auntie Betty uh, was my teacher. Uh, that is oh, Jim Mwangi. Yeah. He's a great teacher. He's a great teacher. That's, Thank you. Uh, pretty good. Uh, Damaris uh, Kifunda is saying, uh, you uh, smart a uh, young man. Uh, thumbs up. That's pretty good. Um, Thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, Wairumo Kimani uh, making the boy child proud <laughs> now that he is a uh, Nyak. Now, why is Nyakundi? Uh, yeah, Wairumo Kimani, I give you that homework. You need to go look for him. <laughs> I don't want to attack Nyakundi. Nyakundi is yes. my friend. I don't want to attack him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's uh, Inez Kavare Rapando is saying congratulations, Agit, uh, from uh, Georgia. Thank you. you USA, if you know. Uh, that person. Uh, Roger invited Cyprian. Hope he's watching. Uh, that's good. I hope he's yeah. watching and see how the boy child is doing, actually. Yeah. Doing pretty good. Uh, yeah, Kudin is my friend. I'm sure he's watching. So, oh, he will watch. Because I think okay. he's trolling him in Kenya right now. I so. never knew about him until the other day. So, if well, I, he, yeah. Uh, he, he's, been, he's, been, he's been out for a while. He just, I, he just I have a lot to chances. say. I have a lot to yeah. say about him. Yeah. Uh, so I think we can move on. Tight. Yeah, Thank we you. can move on to um, <laughs> we um, uh, Timothy Kamawe is saying he need to come over. We congregate uh, at Kasarani and explain in simple terms about all these machine diagnoses, MRI, CT scan. Otherwise, nuclear medicine may have learned uh, here when we are long extinct. Uh, that is uh, Timothy uh, G. Uh, Kamawe. <laughs> um, and let's uh, move on. Uh, and I see my friend there, Ms. Uh, Richards. Lily is watching. Thank you. Shout Hi, Richard. Out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hello, Richard. And, yeah. And um, uh, somebody's asking the GPA uh, to get in this uh, nuclear medicine. And I think we're going to talk about that because that's the next topic. We're going to talk about the UAB uh, uh, selection uh, process. Uh, let's uh, move on uh, to uh, the next. Um, uh, how about you sing Kenya Namzungu lady? Who will he choose? I'm not sure what he's alluding <laughs> to. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what he's talking about there. I don't um, discriminate. I'm Kenya and Mzungu. Oh, okay. And by the way, before we go too far, are you single? Well, I I'm single for now. Oh, I'm, I'm, well, yeah, but I'm not looking. I'm just single. Right? <laughs> Trying to focus on, on things and looking for jobs and all that. Um, so yeah, he's, sing uh, he's single and he's not looking for now. Okay, <laughs> uh, that's good. Yeah, a uh, UAB uh, selection uh, process. Uh, this is uh, one of the things that I was reading and I was doing my research here is really uh, quite inspiring and very uh, interesting about the UAB uh, selection uh, process. Uh, what does it look like? What, uh, what are the prerequisites? What is the requirement for these uh, nuclear medicine uh, scientist, uh, you know, what 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 do you need first before you even apply to school? You know, where nuclear medicine, um, is I think it's the only medical field you are. Well, it might not be because it's medical, but it's, I think it's the only medical field you gonna need physics a whole lot and also biology and chemistry, all the three combined together because you're dealing with uh, gamma cameras. That's physics and radiation and nuclear. Stuff and nuclear reactors, and because re those radiation drives come from nuclear reactors, they're made in with nuclear reactors. So that's that's the physics part of it. Uh, and then the patient care and pathologies, if you really want to understand the pathologies, the, the biology part of it, you know, uh, anatomy part of it comes in. So, uh, to my understanding, that's the only uh, medical field that you're going to need both physics and a whole lot of physics. The college physics is, I did it twice, it's, it's really hard. It's hard, yeah. And, and also, anatomy and physiology combined together. You're going to need those. You know that. Uh, yeah. And also you have to be good in um, uh, you also have to be good in um, in healthcare or computer applications because uh, the cameras use, they are computerized. Uh, medical terminology is, I think is, is, is a requirement for all the medical fields. So uh, you, you try to get in healthcare, you know, you have to be good in medical terminologies. Uh, also to understand the health system uh, you know, 
because you're also going to be involved in, in charging patients and, and make sure that you you, you place, uh, you, da you know, you write the right diagnosis for, for them to be charged. Yeah, physics, I hated. I dropped uh, physics in high school. I never did it. Uh, maybe form <laughs> one, form two. But I, I actually... I hated biology. Yeah, I, and I never I knew I was going to use it. Yeah. yeah. I had a biology because uh, I wanted to be an engineer. Then uh, yeah. when I came here, I think uh, my opportunity went. People still are trying to make me go to nursing, and so I started doing a little biology here and there. And so uh, that's when I applied. I had all this, all the uh, prerequisites that I needed uh, for that. But I actually hated biology. It, I wanted to be an engineer. Uh, then I came here. Um, whatever I wanted to work on wasn't working right. So I decided, yeah. you know what, second option, you yeah. medicine. Yeah. I, I never knew they they need uh, you get you needed to have a, a little bit of physics when I was doing my uh, respiratory therapies because it's a lot of like the the air the the, the pressure. You have to deal with the No, that it's, it's just a lot of physics. It's not even funny, and I sometimes exactly. have to, yeah I have to do it. Exactly. I, I did twice. Yeah. So um, how long is the program for this uh, program? Like is a master's uh, level, uh, and you say uh, the requirement you have to have a bachelor's. Uh, a degree. You have to have correct? a bachelor's degree. Okay. And, and it, how long it works better. Yeah, it works. It works better for you. Is uh, what did you ask me? Uh, how long is it the program? The whole. Oh, how long program? is it? Oh, how yeah. long is it? It's a two-year pro. All master's program. Most of the master's programs in UAB are, are two years program. Uh, besides uh, uh, physicians assistants, I think they are three years. Uh, but most master's programs are two years program. Okay, and did you have to go for for you know the clinical sites, uh, the hands-on, uh, what is the yeah. program, and where did you go? Uh, I, I went, so I, I've been rotating because uh, you do more, a whole lot of classes, and they also make you do most classes. And uh, well, on the first semester you don't go to clinical rotation, but on the second semester you do you do two days every day of uh, 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 clinical rotations, and then. As, as the semesters keep progressing, you keep going, uh, you might go for four days. On my last semester, I actually didn't have any classes of, of this on four semesters. I was, I was just doing five days uh, in clinical rotations uh, in the hospitals around here. Birmingham is like uh, more of a scientific kind of city now. It used to be industrial city in the past. Now there's so many hospitals uh, around here. But uh, I started at the uh, University of Alabama Hospital, which is one of the leading uh, uh, research hospitals in the country, especially leading in, in diabetes and, uh, uh, and nuclear medicine. Because actually, my school uh, and the university is a university hospital. So University of Alabama in Birmingham is the only school in the country that has that kind of a reactor that makes radioactive uh, uh, drugs. It's called a cyclotron. Uh, any other place you find a cyclotron that makes that kind of stuff, it's kind of reactor. You find it in a, in a, in either government projects or private uh, radio pharmacy. So we have the biggest in the country. So I got, uh, uh, I was, I was privileged to be, to, to be uh, in UAB and utilize it. But I also went to other different hospitals. Uh, it's one hospital called the Grandview Hospital. That's where, that's where I spent my last time at the Grandview Hospital. Uh, I went to St. Vincent East, uh, uh, the UAB Medical West. Uh, also in Bruno's Cancer Center. That's what I did my pet, uh, pet, a pet rotation. Uh, and it was a pretty nice facility. Okay, and I know uh, most of the masters are program. Uh, they require to do some uh, sort of research. Uh, did you do any dissertations or uh, any thesis on your program uh, for these, uh, you know, nuclear medicine? Yeah, when they when they advertise this course, it was like a research based. Course. Once you do a research based kind of course. Uh, it, it gonna, it's going to deal with research, not a patient. So this one is more dealing with uh, patient. There's also a requirement to do research. Though. So uh, I did research in, uh, but it's, a, it's, it's not like a mandatory, but we're supposed to require to just to fulfill the program to do research. Uh, so uh, I did my research in, in gastro, I said from Gill, uh, one of the procedures we do a uh, transit studies. Uh, uh, so I did that as, as part of my research. Oh, gastro, I okay. said uh, transit uh, so studies. So what you're saying, uh, since this is a kind of more research uh, program, uh, so the thesis and uh, dissertations is not a requirement, uh, but you can still... No, it's not, it's not a research-based program. So, you know, a research-based program, you're not going to deal with patient. You're going to be doing the research and the whole kind of stuff. But it's, it's more patient interaction kind of program. So uh, dissertation wasn't like so much a requirement, but it's part of the program you, uh, we, you're supposed to do uh, just a small research. So I did my, uh, we did research. You have to do research too throughout the year. You pick one procedure and, and really do research on it. 
Wow, uh, pretty exciting. And the other thing came up, uh, your class was only, how big was your class? What was how that? People, how many people in your class? Oh, my class, no, we only four of us uh, on, on, on an inaugural class. Uh, we, we only four of us uh, for this year. Oh, okay. Wow. That's, so it's only four in the United States so far. Who have yeah, it's only class. so far in the United States. This is the only program right now to, pro to graduate for uh, students in nuclear medicine, the master. So uh, we're the only four uh, that, that, that did it. Okay. Uh, can you also talk about any board uh, certifications or license? Are you required for these uh, type of program? Exactly. Yeah, we are, you have to be certified. You have to do both exams. I actually try. I was supposed to do my board exam next week, but this thing blew up out of you know, proportion. So I haven't had time to really study and go back to my notes again. So I had to push it in January uh, to do my, my, my registry exam, uh, my, the board exam. So you are required to do a board exam. There are two board certification days. Uh, uh, I think it's, it's, NT, it's called NTCB and ART. Uh, so you can do either one of those. Okay. Uh, nuclear, think... medicine, nuclear oh. medicine certification board or radiology. Um, I don't. It's a r a r t. Um, I'm losing my thoughts, train of thoughts right now. <laughs> but it's called a r t or nuclear medicine certification board. So you you are supposed to do a license. So you you require to have a license uh, for you to be a nuclear medicine uh, technologist or a scientist. Exactly. Okay, yes. uh, that's uh, good. Um, according to Occupational Outlook Handbook, uh, how is the job prospect uh, for this type of, uh, you know, career? Uh, when I read, you know, publications, they're, they're saying uh, it's one of the fast growing uh, uh, medical field or health profession. Uh, one, of, it's one of the fastest growing health profession uh, in, the, in, the, in the U.S. It's actually the top 20 uh, medical profession. Uh, and they are projecting that between now and the year 2020, or to, they were saying, the last time I saw an article that was came out two, two years ago, it said by the year 2020, a uh, nuclear medicine would have grown by probably 20%. So there are job prospects, uh, I would say. Oh, that's uh, pretty good. And uh, what next for you, PhD, or what are you looking to do next? Well, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've applied uh, of the University of Mississippi uh, to do a PhD in healthcare management uh, mm -hmm. to start next fall uh, of next year. That's around August. So I'm looking forward to uh, healthcare management uh, as a PhD. Why not a nuclear medicine uh, PhD? Do they have it? A PhD in nuclear medicine? Mm -hmm. No, unless you decide to do uh, uh, a doc. Well, you have to be an MD right. or specialized, yeah, right? Have to, have to be, unless, yeah, you have to be an MD and start, and then you have to be an MD and then practice, uh, you know, train for one more yes. year to either choose be oncologist or uh, radiologist or uh, cardiology. So uh, for nuclear medicine, the PhD, I haven't, I don't know how you go that because they just started our master's program. They're just trying it out and see how it's going to work. So yeah. for PhD, uh, I'm sure... In the future, somebody would do it, but I'm not interested in it because uh, I'm, I'm not interested in teaching. Because you know, most PhD uh, people that you know of, uh, if you have a PhD, the only thing you can do mostly is um, it's, it's, it's teach. But if you do a course like healthcare management, especially being a minority in America, they're all looking for boards, directors of in hospitals in healthcare that they are not, and they need diversity. And, and that's 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 what I'm thinking. Like, oh, I want to get my hands in it. So I can be able to make policies and, and make changes, yeah. not even here, or whether it's back home or here, uh, get that training of changing healthcare, uh, you know, overall. If you yeah, do healthcare it's, management, yeah. you have that chance of making policies in healthcare that really think things are not going right. Yeah, it's very interesting for these uh, new courses, because I think nuclear medicine is one of the newest uh, Health professional. It's only like fifty years uh, old. Yeah, know? it's just it's just fifty years old. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. that's new. According to like nursing, they have been you know yeah, it is, it's forever. Really, it's really and, and the same thing with uh, respiratory therapies. And I think it's like sixty years. So I think there's always a problem of what to bridge and next. Uh, and it's exactly. very interesting. You you cannot there's is, is they you cannot come from a master's to PhD. Uh, and the, one of the requirements you have to be an MD uh, specializing in oncology 
uh, for you to get yeah. the PhD program. So it's kind of like really uh, funny how they do uh, these uh, programs. Sure. Uh, let's, uh, let's uh, you know, read some of the comments here. And then I'm going to give you some uh, closing uh, remarks. Then you're going to uh, close this uh, program. Um, there is a question that I saw here uh, from... Uh, Rhoda saying healthcare management is great. Rhoda Jones, she yeah. says it's really great. It is great, uh, especially being a minority uh, because they don't have so many people running these hospitals and they need diversity. Uh, you know, actually, the you know, US, U.S. diversity is changing in the next 50 years. Uh, the, the majority of folks will be the minority by the year 2050. So healthcare yeah. need diversity. Uh, we have so many African immigrants, uh, Spanish immigrants. So we need folks to to run policies that really understand those people. And that's what that, that's why I'm running my training path towards. Uh, that's pretty good. And Wanja Jane is saying, mm -hmm. uh, I got my my PH, my MPH, uh, that is a master's in public health. Masters. Yeah, it was hard, uh, but this seems to be uh, challenging. Uh, but he did it. Uh, so uh, she's saying kudos to you. Uh, for doing uh, that. Um, and Faith uh, is saying, uh, congrats uh, and proud of you. Did you do any you. rotation, uh, radiology, oncology at uh, UAB? She's asking whether you did any uh, rotation. No, I was I was at UAB in nuclear medicine department. Uh, I didn't go to, um, well, nuclear medicine, you also did part of oncology, but I wasn't at oncology department, I was in nuclear medicine department, which nuclear medicine, you also do oncology stuff, like, you know, we, we Radio trace us looking for cancers and all that. So yeah. Yeah, and they're saying PhD in healthcare management is a good choice. Uh, make it's policies really in healthcare. I think that's that would be great. Yeah. It's really that's good. That's true. Yeah. Um, and Faith Anyango Richard is saying um, a physician assistant uh, is fifty years old too. It started with a oh, yeah. degree, now masters and doctorate, and I'm, I can tell you uh, that is one of the hardest program. To get in the United States, uh, to be a peer yeah. here is not a, a peer. Yes, it's a, it's a very long vetting process. Yes, uh, it, you know it's a very long uh, vetting process. But PAs yeah. and, and mm -hmm. practitioners, they, they're just like doctors. They really train hard on these things. So I, I feel like they're just like actual doctors. Two more years of school, they actually, they actually become doctors. Yeah, and funny yeah. thing with PA, you can have bachelors in music or, or business. Uh, the requirement is to have like I think uh, any bachelor's, and they, you have to have like the, the courses they need, whether it's like biology or chemistry, and then you go for two years and you become a PA and making all these big bucks, like a hundred and fifteen to hundred and twenty depending on where you stay, big bucks. So that's really, pretty good. It's impression. really hard yeah. to get in. Yeah, it's really hard to get in some of these courses, uh, especially like UAB, it being a very uh, uh, well well known uh, you know university hospital. Getting in some of these courses in these big schools is really hard. You have to be like really way out there. Yeah, Especially, and I can tell you here. Somebody asked, yeah, someone was talking about a GPA. Yeah, you have to have a, a very high GPA, uh, especially to come in UAB grad school. Most schools require GPA. Uh, to, uh, so for, for UAB, uh, for nuclear medicine, I think it was 3.2. So you have to be like way up there. Like uh, 3.5. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, 3.5, yeah. So... Most and it, all the you know all the all the graduate programs in UAB you really have to have a GPA or uh, a scholar that is way up there because it's a research it's a, it's a research hospital well known and they really don't want to scale down they're, they're you know they really don't want to scale down and so they want to be way up there remain at the top. Oh my goodness, yeah. So it, it's it's crazy some of these programs because I was looking at the statistics here in Dallas for PA and I think. Um, the GPA average was 3.7. I was like, oh my God, I'm, oh, I'm really? still yeah. trying to maintain my 3.0, you know, because I'm working, I'm have kids and all that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm not trying to get 3.7, but it's all good. Um, so uh, anything you're trying to do, giving back to the community, uh, now you have uh, become a nuclear, you know, scientist. Are you thinking to do anything either here or in Kenya to give back to the community? Well, uh, yeah, once I get my license, once I do my BOS exam, uh, and sometime the first week or second week of January. Uh, if somebody reach out for me to give ideas, because now nuclear medicine um, is not uh, in Kenya right now, but I hear there's some equipment. But, you know, 
it requires radiation. And, and most of uh, you know, developing countries, uh, you don't want to have radiation after going on around there. They might end up being in the wrong hands. And, you know, it, it, well, the things we deal with, there are also stuff that can be used to make bombs. It's, it's, it's radiation, it's radio, radiation drugs. So they are very controlled even here. They, they're very controlled. We get monitored every day. Um, and so in Kenya, I don't think we're going to have nuclear medicine uh, anytime soon. But they have that kind of, we can use our, our CT and all that kind of stuff. But you know, we can brainstorm and try to see, do we need to collaborate with India? Because we're sending a whole lot of patients in India to do those kind of, uh, well, they are very advanced also in nuclear medicine. Yeah. Uh, but if someone reach out to brainstorm and see the way forward with, with, with all this kind of healthcare and imaging, you know, I'm out here uh, to give back. I'm also in, in this group, uh, uh, the Healthcare Worldwide Association group on Facebook. So yes, we run it here and Faith, yeah. yeah. Shout out. Yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. the shout out to her. So I'm part of that. Uh, um, I'd be so much busy in school while trying to graduate and all that. So, But I know people are going back to help out. Health, all the all, all type of healthcare profession, whatever. Even you, you know, physical therapy, you know, respiratory therapists, it, all those healthcare uh, folks. I, I want to be part of that every time they go back. People have time to go back and also, you know, brainstorm also. Uh, I hear Baraton has uh, nuclear medicine equipment. I don't know how, what they're doing with them. We don't have radiation in Kenya. We don't have nuclear reactors to, to make those radiation drugs in Kenya. But, um, you know, uh, they want to outsource uh, and brainstorm uh, with me. I'm a Kenyan. I will also want to help. I right? go out there and, and, you know, see the way forward. Wow. Uh, Gibbs, uh, you've done very well. And I'm so uh, proud, uh, my brother. Uh, you have done a really nice job. Um, any uh, closing remarks uh, so we can finish uh, this uh, broadcast? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm overwhelmed by, by the Kenyan uh, response to my, my, what, what I achieved. I did it for Kenya. Uh, I'm so happy at, uh, and, and thank you a whole lot. People that have been encouraging me. I'm receiving calls, emails, especially by single moms. Uh, that they have been inspirational to their kids and to them. And um, it is God. Uh, everything is, 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 is God. And, and I just want to thank you, Kenya, because they are really, really, really encouraging me and saying that I, I put Kenya on the map. I put Karura on the map. Uh, I, I appreciate all the love I'm getting from, from you guys. Wow. Uh, thank you uh, so much uh, for joining the Prudentials. I think uh, your story is one of the most uh, inspiring uh, stories uh, from uh, a guy who came here at a very young age, uh, been here for 13 years, uh, gone to school, dropped out, uh, went back, and now you have master's in nuclear medicine. Uh, and I think that's something to be proud about, you know, and I think your mom should be very proud of you. Uh, and I think Kenyans in general, I think we're breaking barriers, as I said before. Uh, and yes. I hope we see, you know, we hope to see more and more people coming out uh, with these uh, great, uh, great uh, stuff. Uh, so everybody here, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining Prudentials. Uh, this week, next week, I'm going to bring uh, Dr. Afonaki. I know he never showed up last week. We had some schedule conflict, but I'm hoping... Uh, to bring him. So uh, stay tuned. Once I know the date and the time, I'll let you guys know. For now, uh, you guys have a good night and have a Merry Christmas. Thank Asante you. Kate. Sana. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for your platform. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye.